Hello and welcome to Understanding Cyber, where we help people understand what cyber topics really are. With Toby and Tom. Today we're talking about cloud computing and the cloud. Tom's prepared it. So Tom, what's the overview for today? Right, so the aim for today, Toby, is to get to grips with cloud computing, what it means, what it can do, and when you might want to use it. So in terms of an overview, um, we're going to discuss what we mean by the term cloud computing or the cloud, the features and benefits, what types of cloud exist and what services are available, and when you might want to actually use those cloud services. Cool. So the first one is we've all heard of cloud and cloud is mainstream. Everyone talks about it all the time. People use it to back it up. They download things from it. But what actually is this cloud thing? It just seems to be there. What is it? Yeah, so the the first thing to understand about the cloud is that it's a very broad term. It's easier to understand if you first appreciate what we mean by cloud computing. So at a very basic level, cloud computing is where you connect to some sort of remote computer in order to do things. A more technical definition is that it's a computer service available on demand via a network. And the cloud is used to describe where that computer service exists. Okay, so so I think I understand. At the most basic level, the cloud is just a computer somewhere else. It's just it's just not mine. Could you give me an example of like something a bit more specific? Yeah, that's right. It, it's basically somebody else's computer. So I have a Google Drive. Basically, I signed up to Google and they provide me with some computer storage where I can put files, pictures, movies, documents, whatever. Now, that storage is physically located on a Google-owned computer. It's probably sat in some huge secure facility somewhere abroad. I've no idea. But to access it, all I need to do is get on a computer with an internet connection, log into my account, connect to the storage computer over the internet, and copy my files in and out. Really simple. Cool. So, okay, so, so there's this other computer somewhere. Like, Why is that a good thing? What features of this cloud are better than me having it on my home computer? Yeah, let's take the the Google Drive as an example, right? So first of all, I can access it from any computer, provided it's got an internet connection, and obviously provided I can remember my login credentials. So I can do it from any computer I want, at any time I want. And if I want, I can also increase the amount of storage that I have. It might cost me a little bit more, but I can do that. And that's the beauty of the cloud, and the key feature is that someone else manages this remote computer. How much of it they manage depends, but we'll, we'll come on to that. I can access it whenever I want, wherever I want, and I can scale the service. That is, increase or decrease how much I use according to my needs. I don't need to go out and buy a new physical hard drive. I can just buy more storage online. Cool. So it sounds like the key benefits are that it's just really simple. I don't have to worry about a bunch of things. So there's just this one cloud, and, and that's what I need then, isn't it? So you like the Google Drive cloud, I've got that same as iCloud and everything else. So that's a good point. So firstly, no, that there are thousands of, of clouds, which is why the term is kind of confusing. It's, it's, it's a general term to describe a remote computer service that's managed for you by someone else. And yeah, you mentioned that the iCloud and Google Cloud, these are, these are different clouds managed by different people. And, and storage is one thing, so I've talked about the Google Drive, but you can do all sorts of things with cloud services. You can have an entire computer on which you can install and run anything you want, or you can just access your own custom software applications, or you can use well-known software applications for things like email or document editing. There are loads of different cloud services offered by lots of different providers to do different things for different people and different organizations all around the world. Okay, so it sounds like the cloud probably isn't actually a very good description. There's a number of different types. So are there specific types of cloud and when are they good? Like, Explain a bit more. Yeah, so there are different types of clouds and they're called deployments. So in really broad terms, you have public, private and hybrid. I'll start with public clouds. This is what you generally think of when you think of the cloud. They're publicly available to anybody. So companies like Google, Apple, IBM, Microsoft, Amazon, and loads of others provide lots of services that anyone can access over the internet. Some of them are free, some of them you've got to pay for. The thing with public clouds is that the physical computers that provide the service do so for lots of customers. So my Google Drive storage is on a Google computer somewhere. That computer probably holds the drive for like hundreds, if not thousands, of other customers too. That doesn't mean we can access each other's data, but it's an important thing to understand when we come to security. So can I just understand, you said it's on one computer. Like, is it just one random computer somewhere? Do they share it a bunch across a number of them? I'm worried that it needs backing up and things like that. So this is the beauty of how it's managed. It's sat on a physical computer somewhere but they worry about all the backing up and they probably duplicate it to other servers so it's probably stored in different bits across all different sort of computers 
and it has redundancy in it so you're unlikely to lose any of it it might get moved around physically but as far as you can tell as the customer it's all in one place that you can you can access really easily but they do the management for you okay cool and so that's public clouds what were the other two things so you have private clouds so some companies for example will make their own private clouds or, or get a provider to do it for them Let's say, for example, they've got sort of very specific needs. So they want lots of computer storage for their staff to use. Um, they want them to be able to access some common applications and some custom applications, but probably in a more secure and slightly bespoke way. So, for example, they're a bank, right? So let's say they don't want their data being accessible over the internet by anybody for their internal business, and possibly they don't really want to share the cloud computer it's hosted on with anybody else. They probably opt for a private cloud customized to their needs and it's more secure because it's not shared physically shared with anybody else and then you have hybrid clouds which we won't dwell on but basically they're like a combination of the other two a little bit of private so on your premises and a little bit of public cloud so out there uh, hosted by a different company i'm going to make the assumption that if you pay a bit more money then you get the private cloud yeah if you're paying for that extra privacy and you have to pay for it that makes sense why i'm interested in is there's different types, like, but what can you say? There's different kinds of services, whether that was email or Drive. Is, is that it, or are the services a bit more specified than that? Absolutely, they're a bit more specified than that, and it's actually quite a complex, complex area. But we'll try and break it down into the sort of the three main types of service model. There are quite a few more, but these are the sort of the core ones. So you've got infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. And it takes a while to get your head around them, but I'll, I'll just do it in really simple terms. So infrastructure as a service is where the cloud provider manages some physical hardware, so a physical computer somewhere on your behalf, and you can install and run lots of different computers on that computer, each with different operating systems, and each of them can run whatever applications you choose. There's slightly more to it, but basically it's the sort of the most simultaneously the most basic, but also the most complex, and it's really sort of customizable to your needs. And that's just my computer in someone else's data center then? Exactly, yeah. So you can just you can install whatever operating system you want on it, apps, the whole lot, everything. You decide what you want to run on it. And you can increase, decrease the memory, the, the processing power, lots of other stuff as well. So they do the hardware and you do everything else. Then you've got platform as a service, which is kind of similar, but they manage the operating system as well. So you have this computer with an operating system that's managed for you. And you can install and run applications of your choosing. They could be like common applications or they could be custom applications that you've made yourself. The cloud provider manages the physical hardware and the operating system. And then finally, you've got software as a service where simply the cloud provider gives you access to software applications, just the applications. They manage the hardware, the operating system and the application itself. You just access it remotely and do whatever you want. So Microsoft Office 365 or even Gmail a really good example of this really simple just software cool okay so that kind of gives me the idea that there's three different flavors in terms of private public and a mix of the two and then there's three different ways styles where it's just someone else's data center with my computer in it a platform or software i, I kind of get the email bit and log into my gmail and not have my own email server like hillary clinton but why would i want to use these cloud services what all the reasons that makes it better than just doing my own thing well it really depends on what you're doing and what you want and the, the simple slightly cheap answer but it's true is to say any situation where the benefits that we've discussed can be applied to you so it doesn't matter if you're an individual or a business the cloud offers you the option to pay for somebody else to manage services for you so this can often be easier and cheaper than doing it yourself as you, as you kind of mentioned about email servers and also public cloud services are generally secure they're pretty reliable very reliable in fact and support is always on hand if you need it. You can also access it where you want, whenever you want. So if you've got lots of distributed offices or staff that work from remote sites, they're always changing around, moving around, or they work from home, then it might be a good option. And the big one is that you can scale up and down to suit your needs. So there's, it's a nice, easy and cheap way to increase the amount of computer service, computer power, computer data storage, whatever you want, that you have access to. So if you're a growing business or you have, let's say, like seasonal changes in your, in your staff or customer numbers, you can adapt as you want by, by bringing it up and taking it down. And it's much in that respect, it's much cheaper than doing that yourself because someone manages it for you. And they provide to lots of other companies so they aggregate um, the sort of the differential themselves. So it's not your problem, it's theirs. That's cool. So it sounds like one of the best things about it is it's just really flexible and it can allow me to change things really quickly and deploy quickly or, or slowly and not worry about rent and physical storage. 
Is yeah. there anything else that I need to add? So I'm thinking that I might use the cloud and try and make use of a bit more, but what's going to buy me? What else do I need to be to think about? There's, there's two sort of really important things to be aware of. We mentioned one of them, and that's the fact that in some cloud deployments, your data is on the same physical computer as other customers. There's a couple of implications here. Well, maybe we'll do it in another podcast, but it, it's worth understanding that there are risks associated with your data being on the, on the same physical storage as somebody else. Also on that point, it is, in, it is physically stored somewhere. If there are data regulations or privacy regulations that apply to you as an organization, and that physical data may be stored in a different country, you need to think about that. Now, cloud providers will, will manage that for you. If you want your data to be physically stored in a certain country, you can do that, but it's something you need to think about so you don't get caught out. The second thing to know is that cloud providers typically use a, a pay-as-you-go model. So it's really, really important you understand the pricing model and fee structure. Otherwise, you might end up accidentally spending a huge amount of money on unexpected or unwanted services. Ah, oh, so yeah, I've heard a few people say that the cloud wasn't necessarily cheaper when they f- they first thought it was cheaper. Actually, it's, it's just more about flexibility rather than necessarily being cheaper. That makes sense then with that pay-as-you-go model. That's right, yeah. So that's given me a good awareness of cloud. Could you just refresh my memory and summarize what we've spoken about? Sure, yeah. So we discuss what we mean by the term cloud computing or the cloud, effectively a computer service available on demand via a network. And we talk through some of the features and the benefits. So it's scalable, quite secure accessible anywhere anytime it's managed for you so it's it's easier and cheaper than doing it yourself often but it does depend on what you're doing we talk through what types of cloud uh, exist so public private and hybrid and the types of services that are available so a whole computer for you to play with an operating system for you to install apps on or just the apps themselves but good to be aware that there are others too we mentioned when you might want to use cloud services so as i said really Whenever you think the benefits we just mentioned can can be sort of realized by you as an individual or your organization as an alternative to building and running your own computing solution. And we just said a couple of things to be aware of. Bearing in mind it's it's physically stored sometimes that the physical service is on the same um, physical hardware as other customers um, and also just being aware of the pricing and fee structure that uh, cloud providers offer you. Awesome. So Tom, thank you very much for presenting that people enjoyed it and if you want to get in contact with us you can do so at understand cyber on twitter and that's all from me toby and me tom bye 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 hi i hope you enjoyed the episode if you want to run a cyber exercise be it tabletop or a technical adversary simulation please get in contact with toby via the clear cut cyber website where i'll help you run one for your business An exercise can let you test your people and processes at a time of your choosing, not an attacker's, and work out how good your defences really are.